Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this episode, we're gonna talk about the complex conjugate and complex division. So to do complex division, we need to introduce the idea of the complex conjugate. And it's denoted with this little bar over top of the complex number. And all it means, it's a pretty simple idea, that if your complex number is a plus bi, the conjugate is just a minus bi. We just flip the sign in between the real and the imaginary parts. So for example, if z1 is 6 minus 2i, then z1 conjugate would just be 6 plus 2i. Relatively easy. Conjugation has a lot of nice properties when you're dealing with complex arithmetic. For example, if I add two complex numbers and then take their conjugate, it's the same as taking the conjugate of the two numbers individually and then adding them. It works exactly the same for multiplication and subtraction. It even works the same for division. The, con the conjugate sort of like distributes over the operation. So I won't prove these, but they're fairly easy to do when you know how to do um, basic arithmetic with complex numbers. The other one here um, is kind of self-explanatory when you think about it. If I conjugate twice, I should be back to where I started. So if I flip the sign from positive to negative and then negative to positive, I'm back where I started. So now that we've introduced the complex conjugate, we can do division of complex numbers. So in this example, I've got two different complex numbers and I want to divide the second by the first. So let's set it up. It'll look just like a fraction, three minus four i over one plus i. And the way we do it is we multiply by the conjugate. And this is really similar to something you would have done in a pre-calculus class or uh, maybe a calculus class multiplied by the conjugate. It's probably something you've seen somewhere along the line. So I'm going to multiply by z1 conjugate over z1 conjugate. I'm multiplying by one, the conjugate of the denominator over itself. So that's why I'm allowed to do that because multiplying by one doesn't change the quantity. So what does this look like? Remember, the conjugate is just flipping the sign in the middle, so the conjugate of 1 plus i is just 1 minus i. Now, why does this work? Well, it works because now, in the denominator, I have a difference of squares. If you FOIL that out using the difference of squares formula, it works out to just 1 squared, which is 1, minus i squared. Right? We just square the first term minus square the second. And you can see that you're more than welcome to FOIL that out, but I'm just going to use the difference of squares shortcut. Now, this is nice because in the denominator, remember i squared is negative 1. So this is actually 1 plus 1. And in the top, now we just have a multiplication of complex numbers. So if you think back to the last video, we use the distributive property and we sort of FOIL this out and combine like terms. So if I FOIL this, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times minus i is minus 3i, minus 4i times 1 is minus 4i, I have minus 4i times minus i is going to be plus 4i squared. So on the bottom, that's really nice, that's 1 plus 1 is 2. On the top, Remember that i squared is negative 1, so I'll just replace this plus 4i squared with minus 4, and I can just combine the real terms and the imaginary terms. So as far as the real terms go, I've got 3 minus 4 is negative 1, and I have minus 3i minus 4i, that makes minus 7i. And now, while this is correct, we typically like to se separate this into the real part and the imaginary part, so I'll just split this fraction and make it minus 1 half minus 7 halves i. That's sort of the standard form of complex numbers. So here, this would be the division of the two complex numbers using the conjugate. In this video, we introduced the complex conjugate and many of its properties, and we learned how to do division of complex numbers using the conjugate. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll join me for the next episode where we'll start talking about the complex plane. Have a great day.